Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a WordPress website on your Raspberry Pi. Now I have a Raspberry Pi right here, which is running the Raspberry Pi OS Lite version. It's the headless version. There's no desktop environment, um, but this tutorial will work for other versions of Raspberry Pi OS, as well as if you're running Ubuntu on your Raspberry Pi. So if you're all set up with that and ready to go, then we can get on into the tutorial. Otherwise, I have another video on this channel, which will guide you through that process of installing the operating system, enabling SSH and connecting to Wi-Fi um, so that you can log in via SSH to your Raspberry Pi. So um, let's go ahead and start with the tutorial here. And that is the first thing that I've done here. I've logged in via SSH to my Raspberry Pi at this IP address. And now I am sitting on my Raspberry Pi and ready to go. So the first thing I wanna do, and this is always good practice when you're installing new software on any type of Linux operating system is to do sudo apt update to make sure that we are looking at the latest uh, versions of our packages to make sure that that is all up to date and it looks like we are good to go and we can always follow that up with a sudo apt upgrade to make sure that all of our packages on our Raspberry Pi are up to date and we are good to go there. Now, at this point in the tutorial, you have an option here. You can either use an Nginx web server or an Apache web server to run your Raspberry Pi, or I'm sorry, not to run your Raspberry Pi, to run your WordPress website. Um, I'm gonna use an Nginx web server, which I actually already have installed here, and we can confirm that with uh, sudo apt install Nginx and it says Nginx is already at the newest version. Um, or if you don't wanna use Nginx, you can do a sudo apt install Apache, uh, sudo apt install Apache 2, and that will install an Apache web server. I actually have another video on that if you wanna go through that process instead. So, uh, but we're gonna proceed with the Nginx as our web server. The next thing we wanna do is to install, install um, a database. So we're gonna use Maria database for our backend uh, database um, that's we're gonna eventually connect to WordPress. Then we're gonna install some PHP packages as well. So let's go ahead and do that with sudo apt install maria database dash server. Okay, so this, like I said, um, this is a big one. This is 151 megabytes. This is going to install the database that's uh, that WordPress is gonna use to um, save some information, post pages, images, all that stuff. Um, so that way it has a, a persistent storage if you know anything ever happens. If, you're, if you turn your website off or if you turn your Raspberry Pi off, that way that, that database is going to save all of that information in there for you. So um, this will take a few minutes. I'll pause the video here and catch back up with you when it finishes. All right, guys, we have our database installed. And like I said, we have to do some PHP packages as well. So we can do that with sudo apt install php-f pm and then php dash mysql hit enter this will be an additional 14 megabytes of space type y hit enter to continue same thing here we'll pause the video and i'll catch back up with you when it finishes all right guys we have all the packages that we need let's move on to installing wordpress so we're going to put wordpress inside of our var www directory and typically websites are hosted out of the html directory but we're going to do it slightly different we're going to host it out of the uh, a directory called wordpress so but first let's get the wordpress installation files and we can do that with um, sudo wget https colon slash slash wordpress dot org slash latest dot tar dot gz and as you can see we're getting um, this this archive file from the official wordpress website and we have that now download it onto our raspberry pi and we can unarchive that we can basically unzip it uh, with sudo tar dash x v z f and then the name of the file latest.tar.gz and that's going to expand everything into that directory called wordpress like i was talking about so we don't need that archive anymore anymore we can do sudo rm latest.tar.gz to get rid of that so now we only have the html directory 
and the WordPress directory. Now at this point, I think it's a good idea to change the ownership of the WordPress directory. As you can see uh, right now, uh, nobody owns that directory. I think it would be a good idea to have Pi, our, our user that we're working with, um, own that directory. So we can do that with sudo chown dash capital R for recursive. And we're gonna assign that to the Pi user in the Pi group. Uh, specifically for the WordPress directory and anything under it. So let's go ahead and execute that. And then we'll take a quick look under the uh, WordPress directory, what we actually have in here. So we have, um, you know, an index.php file and a whole bunch of other files that are, are, are core to making WordPress work. So as far as WordPress is concerned, we have everything in place that we need. The next step is we want to go to our Nginx web server and tell Nginx, like, hey, we have this WordPress website over here in this directory. I want you to serve that uh, information to people who request pages on it. So we can do that by going to the uh, etc nginx sites available directory. And in here we have our default um, configuration file. We're actually not gonna use that. So we can actually remove that with sudo rm default. And we're going to make a new configuration file in here called uh, WordPress.conf. And I'm going to, we're going to use the Nano text editor in, and you can use whatever text editor that you want, but Nano seems to be the easiest for most people. So um, type in sudo nano WordPress.conf. And then in here we want to, um, I mean, I'll use my cheat sheet over here to copy and paste some code, but for you guys, if you want to go down in the description below and copy and paste this code, I'll have it linked down there. Um, so that way you don't have to type it off of the screen, then uh, we can we can proceed with the tutorial. So a couple things I want to point out here. We have our server block right here. It's listening on port 80, which is the default port for HTTP. And uh, the server name, if you have a domain name, you can keep, you can type the domain name here, but for for our case, we can just uh, put like an underscore to accept any type of domain name that is passed here or a host name or anything like that. Now the root of our WordPress website is going to be out of var www WordPress, the, word, the directory that we just created. The index file is going to be index.php. And we have two location blocks, one for non-PHP files and one for PHP files. So this PHP file location block is going to uh, try to execute any, or maybe executes the wrong word, try to generate any content for a PHP file um, that ends in .php. And it's going to do that with uh, the, so remember the, the PHP packages that we installed? This right here, this fast CGI pass, points to this upstream up here, and it's just using a socket to um, communicate from WordPress to that PHP handler. So that's how that all kind of links up. If it doesn't make 100% crystal clear sense, then that's okay. Just know that um, this is kind of where it exists as far as the configuration file is on your system. So you're just aware that that is, um, th that is here and that's how it's connected. So we'll save this file with control uh, X, and then it's asking you, do you want to save the modified buffer? You can type a Y for yes, and then hit enter. And now in here, we'll, we'll, we will see that we have our WordPress configuration file. Okay, so now in order to tell Nginx that this configuration file um, exists and we want to use it, we have to create a symbolic link from the sites available directory to up a level from here is the sites enabled directory. And right here, uh, right now we don't have anything in here except the the default, which is we just deleted that. So um, in order to make that symbolic link, we can do sudo ln-s etc nginx, and we're just gonna work with the full path here, sites available, and then wordpress.conf, and then we're gonna symbolic, or yeah, link that to etc nginx sites enabled to that directory. So now if we list uh, if we look at the directory contents of sites enabled, we will see that we have wordpress.conf in there. And I think it'll just be for good measure to remove the uh, the default configuration file from the sites enabled directory too. Okay, so now we only have this one enabled. Okay, the final step to applying those changes 
for nginx is to reload nginx so we can do that with sudo system ctl reload nginx and as long as you don't see any type of output here that means nginx has accepted those changes and is now serving wordpress so let's open up a um a web browser here and let me go ahead and do that and what we're going to do is go to the IP address of our WordPress or our, we're going to go to the IP address of our Raspberry Pi which is 192.168.0.136 hit enter and that is going to load up our engine or <laughs> I keep getting everything mixed up that's going to load up our WordPress installation the last part of our WordPress installation so um, this right here is saying that uh, we're going to need a database uh, set up and installed and ready for us to connect from WordPress to the database. Um, we don't have that yet, but let me just show you what that looks like. It's going to ask us for the database name, the username, the password, the database host, and the table prefix. So keeping that in mind, let's go back to our terminal window and log into our our MySQL server and uh, we installed Maria database but that is a flavor of MySQL so we can simply type sudo MySQL and that's going to open up our MySQL command prompt now again I'm going to use my cheat sheet over here to um, issue these commands and you can copy and paste them from the link in the description but what we're going to do is to create a database called WordPress with this uh, this character set so hit enter for that to apply that change and then we're going to create a user and this is this is bad practice but just for the sake of this tutorial um, the users the user's username is username and we're operating under the local host and the user's password is password okay so i would suggest changing the username and changing the password local host is good that's what you want because our 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 MySQL server is on the local host, which is this device. So go ahead and hit enter for that. Now we want to grant all privileges on the WordPress database and all the tables to the user with username, username um, on this host, on this local host. So hit enter. Then lastly, we can apply those uh, changes with flush privileges and exit out of our MySQL command prompt. Now with all that in mind, let's go back to our WordPress installation. And as you can see, I picked the names that I picked for obvious reasons. So the database name was, user, was WordPress, the username was username, the password was password, the host was localhost, and the table prefix can be whatever you want. Now, again, if you change any of those uh, names, such as the database name, username, password, change them here, because this is something that you can change. Um, if not, go ahead and proceed and hit submit, and it's going to make sure that connection exists, and it does. Um, there's one other issue here, unable to write to wp-config.php file. So this is a permissions, um, a permissions issue. Let's go back in here. I think I know what the issue is. If we go to cd var www, do an ls-la of the WordPress directory, we are own... Pi is the owner of that. Um, let's do an ls-la of the contents inside of WordPress, and Pi is also the owner of that. I'm wondering if it wants us to have uh, the the www data user. So let's try that. Let's let's change the ownership again from Pi to um, www data. So c h o w n dash r. Uh, the user is going to be www-data colon www-data and then we're going to apply that to the WordPress directory and everything else under it. So do an ls-la again. Now www-data owns the WordPress directory ls-la for WordPress and www-data owns all of the files under there. So let's see if that helps um, helps with that and we're going to go back one one page here and try to resubmit this so we'll hit submit and that worked so that was just the issue there i probably should have told you guys to change ownership to www data first um, instead of pi and without going into it too much www data is one of those pre um, existing users and groups on your uh, operating system your your debian flavor of operating system Okay, so 
Let's go ahead and finish up with this installation of WordPress. Click on run the installation. This is where we're going to um, personalize the installation. So what is the name of your WordPress website? I'm gonna call it Tony's Raspberry Pi. My username to log into WordPress as the administrator is going to be Tony. I'll keep this uh, this password. You can change it to whatever you want. I'm just gonna copy it onto my clipboard and then my email, Tony at TonyTeaches.tech. And uh, I don't want any, uh, even though they won't be able to access it, I don't want any search engines to look at this right now. Okay, so click on install WordPress. And if everything goes according to plan, this will be successful. And then we can go ahead and log into our WordPress website. So we'll just give that a minute here to think and um, hopefully we'll be in good shape. So let's, um, there we go. Okay, we're good. So let's go ahead and log into our WordPress admin dashboard with our username that we just created, Tony, and the password on my clipboard. Hit log in. And there we go. This is your WordPress admin dashboard. Um, I just wanna show you, cause I know it's more exciting, uh, the front end of this website. This is this is a website that's running off of your Raspberry Pi right now. So this is a sample blog post. If we click on here, we can see that there is a blog post with this content. Um, I was the author. Apparently I created it today, November 29th. There's one comment down here, um, which is just, you know, dummy content. And yeah, this is this is great. So if you're if you're not familiar with WordPress, because we're logged in, we can go into the dashboard here and there's many different things we can do. We can write blog posts in the post page here. Um, we can upload media images, um, stuff like that in the media section pages. We can create pages in addition to blog posts. Uh, you can manage all your comments in here. Appearance, you can pick a theme. If you don't like the current theme, you can add a new theme, which is, there's I would think hundreds of different themes out there. Um, and then once you do have a theme, you can further customize it. You can add widgets, menus, backgrounds, and edit your theme directly. As far as plugins are concerned, this is where the true power of WordPress comes into the picture. Um, there are probably, I actually think I knew, there was like 50, 58,000, maybe 60,000 different plugins that are available and official plugins that is um, so WordPress.org supports and um, recognizes. So these do everything from add, adding a contact page on your website to adding some type of analytics to see what the users are doing on your website. So many different types of plugins. Um, that is where, like I said, the power of WordPress really comes into the picture is with the plugins. Um, if you want to learn more about WordPress, if you're not already familiar, I have other videos on this channel about WordPress, which I suggest that you check out and uh, familiarize yourself with it. Otherwise, um, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you found this video valuable, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing for more videos from me in the future. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.